initiating moisture. Welcome to the Moist Meter. Today we're looking at glass. And before we start this, I'd like to talk about forgiveness because I think it's very important to this movie. Forgiveness is something that it's often hard to do. In my case here, going into this movie, I had to forgive one particular sinner, and that is the director, M. Night, shitting on your childhood. He committed a, a very high-level sin by absolutely butchering the Avatar movie to an insulting level, literally dropping his trousers and taking a fat fucking wet fart and pumping it into the mouth of everyone that liked Avatar. It was a disservice what he did to all of humanity with that movie, and I still have not completely forgiven him. I loved Split. I thought that was a fantastic movie, but it wasn't enough to earn my forgiveness. So going into Glass, I had to come in here ready to forgive. And I feel like I did. I mean, I liked Unbreakable. I liked Split. So I, I was very excited to see how this whole thing wraps up. And it's, uh, well, I don't think anyone's going to be completely satisfied with the movie. There's a lot that it does well and a lot of, a lot of stinky shit about it. I'm going to get to the stinkiest shit right now. The ending. The last, I'll say like 35 minutes of this movie are absolutely abominable. So, as you know, this is the conclusion to his trilogy, his superhero trilogy. It, it is a superhero trilogy. I put it like this because it's not what you'd expect for superheroes. You don't have, like, muscles and superpowers and, you know, a big, a big fucking fist to the face and shattered bones all over the place or anything. It's a very psychologically made a character piece superhero trilogy. And it's really, really well done, at least up until Glass it was. And in this movie, the last 35-ish minutes completely forget that it's not supposed to be like a standard superhero movie. It dives into showing off like, these are super human men! Look at them doing super shit! But it's not good. It's not impressive. Uh, basically, to show off some super shit, they do things that you could see on a YouTube video right now in the real world. Like, a guy bending something heavy. Oh, wow. And, like, the ultimate plot, the ultimate conclusion is extremely underwhelming, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but the ending is really fucking dumb. It's really not well done. But up until the ending, there was so much to like about this movie. The opening with David Dunn, I thought, was really great. It showed David Dunn, uh, what he's been doing for the last 19 years since Unbreakable, and it felt right for the character. He was an enjoyable character to watch. And Bruce Willis, I didn't think, gave a great performance or anything, but it almost looked like he tried again, which we haven't seen in a fucking decade. That's rarer than a Sasquatch sighting, seeing Bruce Willis put effort into a fucking movie he's in these days. But he did seem to give it an attempt, and I liked that, and I really liked the entire arc. Well, it's not really an arc he had, but I really liked the entire story, short story he had at the beginning to set up the movie. Uh, James McAvoy's character is absolutely outstanding. An incredible character across the board. He plays a myriad of different characters. They're all convincing. They're all really great. Not all of them super fleshed out, but they're not all supposed to be. Some of them are supposed to be just like fucking wild, like holy shit. What the fuck is that personality doing within this man? Uh, and then Samuel Jackson's character Glass is probably one of my favorite villains. I think he is just an incredible villain. And in this movie, he's actually pretty good until the end. They, they, they fuck him in the ass. He was so fucking good. Up until the end, most characters were. All of them just really kind of got fucked by uh, the, you know, the old M. Night at the end. Now, to just sum up the plot, since it's going to be important to talk about that in this section that I'd like to talk about in the Moist Meter. In a nutshell, there are three superhumans. Well, almost superhumans. No one's entirely convinced and no one really knows about their existence, that they're actual superhumans or anything. And they all get brought to a psych ward where the lead doctor is trying to see if they're actually superhumans or just delusional. She believes they're delusional and it really is super well done. I enjoyed everything in the psych ward because they used really clever ways of making the audience even question if they're actually superhumans. Do they actually possess these powers? Are they what you think they are? And I really enjoyed that whole arc. And it, the characters did a great job of, you know... Trying not to believe it, believing it maybe. It was really, it's really great how they toyed with that. But there's a lot of plot holes that happen throughout this whole thing. And the biggest one that I didn't think about at the time, but I saw some people mentioning and I was like, holy shit, that's a really great point, is this entire psych ward has the worst security in the fucking world. It's like they're guarding a, a blockbuster. 
it, it, back when Blockbuster was popular. You know, actually, no, it's like they're they're guarding a modern Blockbuster. No one's going to fucking go there except to shoot up heroin. So it's not going to have great security. They, they don't put much emphasis on the security here, which I guess could make sense since they're not entirely convinced that they're actual superhumans or anything. So why do they need all the security? But even still, it's laughable. All of these these people, each of their cells is has like no guards. And there is a guard, like one guard stationed every night, and they just fucking leave sometimes for 40 minutes just to go talk or, you know, smoke a, a cig outside or talk to the janitor. Uh, these people just completely left unattended to, free to do whatever they'd like. And they have, uh, in their rooms, they have like glass objects and shit. They have pictures, they have tables, they have all kinds of things that you wouldn't expect a prisoner in a psych ward to have because it's dangerous. Now, the biggest thing, the biggest plot hole is James McAvoy's character is held at bay with lights. They installed lights that would flash anytime he had a dangerous personality take the stage, and it would make him switch to a safer one, which is a really clever mechanic. I thought that was a really good way of keeping the the guy in there and not letting him roam free and break out and go crazy and shit. But the thing is, since they're equipped in these rooms with so much shit at their disposal that they really shouldn't have... All he had to do was cover his eyes so he didn't see the flash. He could have used fucking anything. He could have used his fucking hands to cover his eyes. But for some reason, anytime he tried to escape, he was just looking at it like super fucking wide-eyed like a deer in the headlights. And then obviously changing personalities as a result so he couldn't get out. But all he had to do was cover his eyes and just walk out. Because there's A, no guards, and B, they have so much shit. There's a lot of plot holes, but that was the biggest one that I thought was definitely worth mentioning. I hope that doesn't get into spoiler territory or anything. I don't think it's a spoiler since it's not overly important that there's lights in there. But really, that entire arc of the psych ward I thought was well done, uh, excusing the plot holes. And the movie just really loses itself towards the end. Another thing that's worth mentioning, this movie has almost no soundtrack, which is odd. Because the first two movies had a really nice score. There's almost nothing here. Occasionally there's something that sounds kind of nice, but that's very seldomly used. Not a huge complaint again, but something worth mentioning. Overall, I couldn't help but be disappointed by this, and it's probably just because the third act was as bad as it is, because I really did enjoy everything leading up to it. So let's go ahead and plug this shit into the moist meter. I'm giving Glass a 60%, and it was hard to settle on a score because the last act is extremely stinky, but there is a lot to like, and I think a lot of the characters are really well done as well as a lot of the build-up, but there's no payoff, and there's a lot of really lazy cop-out shit that's just hard to believe that that's how it ends. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's it. See ya. Glass. Honey. Both one word, but so much difference between the two. For example, Glass may have been a horribly disappointing tool of the M. Night Shyamalan empire. Honey is instead an innovative tool designed to help save you money at various internet checkouts. That's right. This free tool lets you save money when you're ordering things like pizza, movies, clothes, video games, and more. It really is one of the best tools available on the internet that makes a legitimate difference. I've personally, and I know Charlie has too, saved money using Honey on a regular basis. It even lets you price match and analyze the trend of the prices and choose to get notified when a price hits its lowest so that you're always saving the most money possible. Did I mention it's free? Head on over to joinhoney.com slash moist to get the money saving honey for absolutely no cost now. Save money online with honey at joinhoney.com slash moist. Thanks honey for saving us money and sponsoring this episode of the Moist Meter.